Today I will present to you one of the most interesting topics in my field of study, which is uh, graph theory. Um, I know the topic might sound a little bit intimidating, but uh, what you need to understand this presentation is quite simple. So um, if you can do the basic math, like simple additions or um, simple modifications, you are pretty good to go. And also um, what you need is the observation skills. And that's probably all you need to have for understanding this presentation. I, um, before I jump in, um, can I ask like, if any of you guys have been familiar with this topic before? A little bit, a little bit. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, I hope you get something out of today's presentation. Hope it'd be useful, okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, about today's agenda, uh, first I will go over some definitions uh, to see what the graph is. And next, we are going to explore one of the uh, most interesting questions in graph theory, which is the uh, shortest path problems. And then we are going to see some examples, and we are going to recap it at the end. All right. And also feel free to interrupt me with any questions you may have, just don't be shy. Okay. All right, let's uh, dive in. Uh, the question is, uh, what is a graph? Uh, if you have been dealing with data before, you might have been familiar with the concept of graph. Uh, on the left one, you have the graph on the uh, x-axis and y-axis. And the right one, you have a bar graph to represent some data. And, but uh, this is not the graph we are going to talk about today. What we are going to talk about today is quite a little bit different and the definition of it is that graph is a collection of nodes and edges. And by nodes here, I will use the uh, red circle uh, to represent a node and the edges will be this, just a straight line. So basically nodes can uh, represent any objects. It can be people, it can be uh, animals, it can be just, just anything. Uh, and the edges will indicate some uh, relationships between two nodes. Uh, that might not sound clear, but uh, let's take a look at some examples here. Okay, uh, here I have a node that represents uh, Howard. And I have a node that represents MIT. And they both can be connected by the edge that says they are in the same city of Cambridge. Is it clear on this one? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And, uh, I can have the nodes of uh, Matt and ECS, and both are the department at MIT. I have Akin, this is me, uh, who is a student at MIT, and I study Matt and ECS. I can have Alice, who loves Matt, and Bob, who hates Matt, and Alice and Bob are rival. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Okay, uh, I would like to make some notes here that this graph is actually quite messy. It has like so many kinds of nodes. You have schools, you have departments, and you also have people. And at the same time, you also have so many kind of edges. You have the same city, have department, students, and many more. So um, in theory, um, this is not wrong. Uh, in one graph, you can have so many kind of nodes and so many kind of edges, but uh, in practice, uh, we usually refer to a graph as only having one kind of nodes and one kind of edges. And what it means by that, uh, if you take a look at the right graph, you can see this graph has nodes that are the states in New England. And the edges will, is, is an indication if two states are neighbor. Are these still on the same page? Yeah, and this is, uh, I also have some examples so you can probably have a better understanding. Uh, the example I'm gonna use is the network representations and probably you guys have seen Facebook before. And what we are going to do is, uh, Facebook actually have a very nice way to represent the network as a graph. And to do so, you can have the node to represent a user and edge to represent the friendships between any two users. Uh, for example, uh, this diagram here, you can see list here, uh, has, list has edge that connects to Emma, Shane, and Alan. 
that means uh, list has three friends, which is Emma, Shane, and Alvin. Is it, is it okay? Is it early? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just want to ask, like, to make sure that everybody is on the same page. Like, uh, just a quick question. Like, uh, how many friends uh, does John have? Four. Four. Yeah. We there. <laughs> Yeah, there are four friends of John, uh, Bob, uh, Jill, Shane, and Leah. Okay, is it good? Okay. Okay, uh, I have another question for you. Uh, on the right, I have a graph whose, who, whose notes are some states in the US. You can have Maine, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and many more. And the edges will represent that uh, there is a road that connects uh, two nodes together. For example, this edge is a road that connects Maine and New Hampshire. This edge is, is a road that connects Vermont and New York. Uh, so basically, you can view this graph as a map, and there are states, then there are roads that connect states together. Yeah. So um, here's my question. Uh, you want to drive from uh, Maine to Maryland, which is the this circle to this circle. And to go to use a road, uh, you need to pay one dollar for each road you take. Yeah, the question is that uh, what is the cheapest route you can take? figures you, you can go along the left edges left edges you mean yeah uh new hampshire vermont new york uh pennsylvania and maryland yeah right. that, yeah that's perfect um, there are actually two uh cheapest route here which are indicated by the green lines and whatever uh, route you take you need to pay five dollars and uh this is what we call the shortest path problem I will uh, explain it in, in, in a minute, but um, if you guys have any questions, if you don't understand the graph, you can ask me. Okay, uh, let's move on. So um, the shortest path problem, uh, it is probably one of the most uh, important questions in graph theory. Uh, computer scientist has been dealing with it for decades, and it also has so many applications in real life. And the way we formulate the problem is that uh, we are given a graph, and we want to find the shortest path in terms of the number of edges to go from one node to another, like we just did to go from Maine to Maryland. And it's actually easy to solve by eyes if the graph is so small. Like Nikita, did I pronounce correctly? Yep. Yeah, he just solved it in like 10 seconds and it's pretty easy if the graph is small. But uh, the question is like, if the graph is large, how do we do it? Like on this one, if you want to go from the left node to the right node, it's probably impossible to solve it by eyes because you know, there are like 100 nodes and 1000 edges. So uh, to solve these problems, computer scientists have come up with a very nice and very simple procedure to find a shortest path. And we call it the bread first search or BFS for short. And we are going to do it now. And I'm going to list the instructions on the left and we are going to solve it together on the right. So to do it, we are going to start with uh, leveling the start node, which is main here with zero. And then we are going to see that from main, you can expand to New Hampshire. So we are going to put one at New Hampshire. And then from New Hampshire, you can only go to Vermont and Massachusetts. So we will put two here. And if you do the same thing from Vermont and Massachusetts, you can only go to New York, Connecticut and Rhode Island and we put three there. And we are going to do it again and again until we find Maryland, which is five. Is it clear on the procedure? Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so um, we found Maryland. It's level five 
meaning that uh, to go from Maine to Maryland, you need to take five ages. Uh, however, these procedures only tell you how, like the number, the least number of ages you need to take, but it doesn't exactly tell you like what path you should be taking. So the question is, um, how do you find such a path that, that costs you $5? And the answer is uh, what we call backtracking. And it is quite simple too. So what it means by backtracking is that uh, you have Maryland at five and you have Maine at zero. You want to find a path that goes like five, four, three, two, one, and zero. And to do that, uh, on the left one, you can go five, four, three, two, one, and zero. And on the right one, you can go uh, five, four, three, two, one, and zero. And these are actually two paths that we just solved earlier by eyes. Is it clear for everybody? Yes. yes. Okay, sounds good. So um, how do you guys feel about uh, this example? Is it like uh, too hard, too easy, or just okay? It's all right. It's all right. All right, everybody. Okay. Um, if this is uh, not too hard for you, I have uh, two questions that might be a bit more challenging. Uh, for this one, uh, you still have a map. Uh, you have to have the same graph with the nodes of the states, but now each road will cost you differently. Like for example, from Maine to New Hampshire, it will cost you one dollar, and from New Hampshire to Massachusetts, it will cost you two dollar. So basically, like the numbers above the edge will tell you the amount of money you need to pay for using the road. Um, you still want to go from Maine to Maryland, but you still pick the same route. I'll tell you here that um, the old one will cost you $11, like one, two, three, three and two. Yeah, can we do better? Um, I think uh, in the lower part of the graph, we can uh, take the right route this time. So it would cost four dollars. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's a good cash. Um, if you go this way, you only need to pay four, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How about the um, upper part? Can you just find the um, shorter way, the cheaper way? Well, we can go from New Hampshire to Massachusetts to Connecticut to New York. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. And um, this is actually the um, cheapest path we can find. So this uh, type of question, uh, we call it the uh, weighted shortest path problem. It's uh, basically the shortest path problem with some variations. So here, every edge will have the corresponding weight. In this case, the weight is just the amount of toll we need to pay for using the road. Is everybody still good? Okay. So um, as you can see, the um, traditional breakfast search will not work on this graph because it will just tell us to go on this way, the, the old way. But the actual cheapest route is just to go on the green line. So the question is, how can we solve it by using the BFS? Uh, the answer is uh, we need to do some modifications. Uh, to use the BFS to solve it, we can uh, add an intermediate node here. So we basically gonna split up the roads. So from one road that costs you $2, it's gonna be split up into two roads that cost you $1 for each road. Is the diagram clear for you? Yes. Yeah. And also the same thing, uh, with the road that costs you $3 can be split into three roads that cost you $1 each. And you can transform the graph from the um, graph with the weights to the graph with intermediate nodes. Right. As you can see, Massachusetts Rhode Island, $2 will be split into two roads and you can do the same for every single age. And from here, you can use the BFS like we just did before. 
Uh, I'm gonna just show you how it goes because it will take too long. You have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we can do the backtracking to find the actual shortest path. Is it clear for everybody? Yep. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Okay, I would like to end with some uh, a couple of examples that uh, you may have come across. So these are the actual examples in real life of the BFS. So the first one is the cheapest flight transits. If you have used some traveling agents before, like uh, you will want to go from one place to another, but uh, if you do the search, it will tell you what is the cheapest route, what is the transit. So in this model, you are given the uh, origin and destination and price of several flights. And for example, here, you want to go to Boston to Los Angeles. You can use the uh, breakfast search to see that this is actually the cheapest route you can find. And another example that I have here is the uh, minimizing the signal delay. So if you want to call a friend, like uh, at least want to call a Bob, want to call Bob, so the signal actually going to bounce off a lot of cell phone towers until reaching the destination. And from the signal to go from one tower to another tower, it has some delays. So we can, we can model this as a graph with the node to be the uh, cell phone towers and the edge to be, represent the delays from tower to tower. And we can use the red first search to see like what should be the fast the route that signal actually minimize the delay. Yeah. Is the example clear to everybody? Yep. Yeah. And that's pretty much all I have for today. Um, just want to recap everything up. Uh, today we learned what the graph is and we see how to solve the shortest path problems by the bread first search both on the uh, one without the weight and the weighted one. And we also saw some applications in real life like route planning and minimizing delays. And yeah, that's all I have for today. If you guys have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I think everything is clear. Yeah, it's clear for me too. No questions from me. Good. That's uh yeah, that's all I have for today. Thank you. Thank you you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.